A major World Cup has just wrapped up in Saudi Arabia. Not your football or hockey World Cup. This was a gaming World Cup. That's right, a World Cup for eSports. And before you dismiss it as a gimmick, listen to the numbers. The tournament had 21 gaming events, more than 1,500 players, more than 200 gaming clubs, nearly 500 million viewers, and $60 million in prize money. Let that sink in. The Wimbledon prize pool is $66 million. The Cricket World Cup had $10 million, and eSports had $60 million. It tells you how big this industry is. This was the first ever eSports World Cup, and there are Saudi fingerprints all over it. The tournament was held in Riyadh. It was funded by the Saudi Investment Fund, and it was won by a Saudi team. In fact, Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman attended the closing ceremony. He handed over the big prize himself. Now, Riyadh's motives are quite clear. It wants to become a sporting hub in West Asia, whether it's for football or eSports. This World Cup brought two million visitors to the kingdom. Tourist arrivals were up 29%, so it's job done for Riyadh. But tonight, we're looking at the larger story. How big is the world of eSports? How is it growing? And what role does India play? But before that, some basics. How exactly do you compete in these games? Don't you play against a computer? Well, not always. Games at eSports events are multiplayer, meaning you play against another gamer. Now, Saudi Arabia had 21 such games like Call of Duty, FC Football, Counter-Strike, Fortnite and PUBG. If you beat your opponent, you advance to the next round, much like tennis or badminton. Gaming is among the fastest growing industries in the world, by the way. It was worth $250 billion in 2022. It is projected to reach $665 billion by the end of this decade. Around 3.2 billion people play video games. Almost 1 billion play online. Of course, most of these are casual gamers. Professional gamers are still few. The industry's biggest challenge is attitude. Gaming is usually considered a pastime. You don't associate video games with skill. But that attitude is slowly changing. Even the International Olympic Committee is jumping in. They cannot include eSports in the Olympics because Olympic sports require physical skills. So they're launching a separate event, an Olympic eSports. The first edition will be held next year and no prizes for guessing where. In Saudi Arabia. So gamers will soon be Olympians. What explains this sudden rush for eSports? Well, gaming companies are making billions of dollars. They also employ hundreds of skilled engineers and designers, plus it's, it's a matter of prestige. Have you heard of GTA or Grand Theft Auto? It's a game series with a number of titles, all of them set in fictional American cities. Millions of young children play this game growing up. Similarly, Japan has Ghost of Tsushima, a game about samurais. And this month, a Chinese company released a new game, Black Myth, based on a Chinese novel. So video games can be a soft power tool, like books or movies. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi talked about it recently. He said India should become a gaming hub. Bharat ke paas, baat badi virasat hai. Hum gaming ki dunia mein baat nahi talent ko lekar ke aas sakte. Vishwa ke har bachche ko humare desh ke bani hui gaming ke aur akarjit kar sakte. Main chahta hu ki Bharat ke bachche, Bharat ke nao javaan, in April, Prime Minister Modi also met India's top gamers. He even tried his hand at some of the games. Again, the idea was quite clear, to give a push to India's gaming industry. And we certainly have the tools. A surplus of engineers and designers, a young population of prospective gamers, plus unique stories to build a game around. Yet the industry is underdeveloped. The Indian gaming sector is worth $3 billion. Reports say there are 18,000 game developers in the country, but most of them focus on small games, mostly those played on mobile phones. The question then is, what can, we, what can be done about this? Well, attitude change is obvious. The stigma around gaming must be removed. It's not always a waste of time. It can be a career path too. Secondly, we need investments because big games take a lot of money. Consider the upcoming GTA 6 game. It reportedly had a budget of $2 billion. And third, more clarity on taxation. India has clubbed skill-based games with gambling and casinos. Online games attract a 28% GST. It's an obvious way to spook developers. 
They have protested this high tax rate and the issue is now being heard by the Supreme Court of India. So India is well placed to capitalize on the gaming boom. But it has a lot of ground to cover and this is a rapidly growing market. So if you don't act fast, it is game over. Across continents, one powerful news source. Bringing you diverse perspectives on the issues that matter. We go beyond the boundaries to give you that little extra about every sporting moment. So thank you for making First Post 5 million strong. We are counting on your support and you can trust us to bring you the news unfiltered and unvarnished. Climate change is on our doorstep. It's time for a revolution to take root. And it starts with 1.4 billion Indians. It starts with one tree. One tree for humanity. One tree for Mother Earth. One tree for our future. Project One Tree, a News 18 Network initiative. Hello and welcome to First Post.